I'm Morgan Jaremus with RT Book Reviews, and today I'm with Dorian Kelly, who is a very prolific author, as well as president of the Romance Writers of America. Hi. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. I, I want to thank you for being with me today because I know you are tremendously busy. This is probably the biggest week um, a year for RWA because you have your conference happening. Oh, it's the biggest and definitely the most exciting, too. We really, really have a good time, but it is some work. I was going to say, uh, 31 years into it, not not for your presidency, <laughs> but, but for the, the conference itself, and it just seems like it gets bigger and better every single year. It does, and I'm very excited that we're in New York City this year. It's the home of publishing and has been forever. We've got great attendance. We have over 220 editors and agents who are here to meet with our members, and our total attendance is over 2,100 people, so it's going to be great. Yeah, and I think one of the great things, at least for me, when I go to an RWE uh, conference, which I've been to a lot, <laughs> um, I really love, there's such a professional air. When you come here, it's so easy if you're a writer sitting at home alone typing on your keyboard to to not maybe think of the business aspect or your career and when you get to the conference um, you're you're educated about what that career means um, you're able to start building your community with other writers yes whether you're an aspiring author or you've got your bestseller you can all come together and and really support each other and and offer each other the advice to really make it through the the rest of the year the focus of our association has always been to promote the interests of career focused romance writers. We're about the business and so when you come to the conference whether you have hit the New York Times list or you've just started your first manuscript and you want to understand the business we are the go-to group for that. You'll find workshops at whatever level you're looking for and you will find a group of people who are so excited to be there and who are so excited to share what they know. The other great thing about RWA is like unlike any other writers organization, we do invite not yet published members into our membership and we were here to help people learn and grow and grasp the business so that they can make the best decisions they can in their career. Publishing in just the last I want to, you know, you can say eight years, but you can also say the last year alone, there's been so many changes. And and to keep up with what's going on, I mean, with the EPUB, and now we've got the digital onlys, but we also have the self-publishing, but we also yes. have, I mean, it's just, it can make your, your head spin. And so having a place to go for that information can be so important for writers. I, it is, and it's tough, you know, our, our board of directors is working very hard to keep ahead of the curve constantly. You know, we, we started looking into the self-publication trend a while ago and have been researching it and have you know tried to wrap our heads around um, what we can do for members mm -hmm. who are interested in that and you know what it might be something that they might be able to find out better someplace else but to keep it all straight and to keep ahead of it I, you know I'd say at this point in the past three months I've seen fantastic changes. It's the Wild West out there. It is the Wild West. I it love is. that. <laughs> yeah. And you just you just never know where the bolts are coming from or, or which way you need to head and rules that existed in stone years ago simply are no longer true. And um, as professionals we are about being able to make enough money off of our writing to live. To support yourselves. Yes, that, that's the whole concept that's your career. here. Yes, this is what we do. And um, so we have started, and we have been for a very long time, open to looking at different avenues that our authors are going to be using to be able to maintain an income where we're just really not sure where the next dollar is coming from. And we don't know. There will be something after the self-publication trend. I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it, whether it's going to be, you know, sponsorship, more sponsorship in e-books or, or, you know, actual advertisements embedded in books. Mm -hmm. But the, the income stream is tough to track these days and we really do have to keep on top of it and be able to share and within RWA the great thing is you have members who are willing to share that among each other mm -hmm. uh, so you're not so on your own. Absolutely and, the, and this is just one aspect of, of things that you talk about in you've got a magazine through RWA that gets yes. published um, here at the conference you have all 
panels and, and people coming together and events to talk about this, but this is only one aspect. Another aspect of the conference, of course, are the wonderful events. Um, you've got keynote speakers, you have luncheons, um, you have you know get-togethers that are sponsored by different publishers so you can find out more about them. Um, can you tell me a little bit about uh, who's speaking and what's happening this year? We have some fabulous speakers coming. We have our keynote speaker, who is Madeline Hunter. Uh, multiple published New York Times bestseller, historical romance author, fabulously known for her great detail and uh, gorgeous conflicts between her characters. We're very excited for her to speak. We have Sherilyn Kenyon speaking at a luncheon who's been at the forefront of the paranormal trend forever and he has probably the most devo devoted fan base I have ever seen. Ever. They're awesome. <laughs> they are. Amazing. And you know she, she's brought that level of excitement to what she does that people will dress up and follow her. They love her and it's great to see that for our industry. We have an opening panel for all of our members who are attending and uh, Diana Gabaldon, Tess Gerritsen, and Steve Berry will be there. Each of these people have um, written in other genres or arguably subgenres, or have moved on, like tests from romantic suspense to more straight thrillers, mm -hmm. but they have so much they can share with our members about their career choices, their career trajectory, their, you know, how they write, what's their process. And I think if you're a reader and you love them, you're going to follow them because you love the way they write their characters and the yes. conflicts that you set out. Yes. And so I, I love that opportunity to maybe break into a little bit of a new genre for, for readers to find something else they're, they're looking for, and you can, you can hear all about that. Yes, and as a writer, it's always great to be looking around and, and make sure that you have a very broad level of reading taking place. Absolutely. Okay, one thing that I know is incredibly special that RWA does is they have a literacy autographing every year. Um, your organization is well on to almost a million dollars. Hopefully you're going you're gonna to hit it soon. Yes. Um, you bring all of your authors that are going to be at um, the conference together for one night and they sell their books, they sign, they take pictures with their readers, with their fans, with other authors, and the money goes towards Readers for Life, which is pro-literacy, um, making sure that that money goes directly um, to people who, for educational purposes. I just, I can't tell you how excited I am that that uh, that, that the writers organization really goes for and, and really makes sure that they no one gets left behind. It's a very strong link, you know. Uh, I can't imagine going through life not being able to read. I can't even begin to understand how hard it would be not to understand a menu, not to be sure what so many things that are put in front of you say. So on a very fundamental level, reading is incredibly important in life. and and. In addition to the basics, the, the richness it gives you, if you can go to a library or you can go to a bookstore and pick up a book and step into another world through reading. Uh, so yes, RWA is very, very proud of the efforts that we put in with our Readers for Life literacy autographing. And it is a connection that I hope we maintain for a very, very long time. Our members, our author members who sign feel very strongly about it. We've had marvelous support from publishers who donate these books so that the money can be passed through to charity. And uh, I can't think of any better cause for a group of authors to pick up than literacy. Absolutely. And I know one of the things that's also great about a literacy charity, by teaching a parent how to read or by, by educating a parent, you're also educating the next generation and bringing them up. So this is not something like a one-off, this is something that really you can, you can feel coming down and working its way through the generations. And uh, hopefully, at least, you know, the, the goal of everyone is 100% literacy, making sure that everyone has, has that, that right of, of education and bettering themselves in that way. Absolutely. And we've had letters over the years, too, that I thought were very, very touching. A lot of times when they're dealing with a, a woman who has not been able to take the time to learn to read well, the first books that the instructor will give the uh, student to look at are romance novels. Absolutely. And uh, because the themes are there and there, there's that whole underlying absolute sense of hope 
and optimism by the time you finish a book. And uh, there, there have been some lovely thank you letters from people who've learned to read based on romance novels. I think, you know, honestly, I think that's absolutely true. One of the reasons that I am um, such an avid reader is because I did start reading romance novels when I was young, and it made, and, and you know, you go from romance novels, and then you go to romantic suspense, and you really branch out from there, but it really gave me that base love of reading. Oh, absolutely, and romance readers tend to be voracious readers. <laughs> And we love that. And I was the same. I read romance well before I started writing romance. I can remember my first Harlequin Presents when I was probably 14. And uh, yeah, set me up for life. <laughs> That's great. So this year with the autographing, it takes place at the Marriott Marquis yes, in Times does. Square. Uh, on Tuesday, this Tuesday, from 5.30 until 7.30. We're talking about... 400 authors here. I think almost 500. Almost 500. Almost 500 is our biggest year yet. And the event is open to the public. And so I really, really invite anybody who happens to be down here to please come in. Meet your favorite authors. Uh, we do have our keynote. Uh, Madeline will be there. Uh, Cheryl and Kenyon will be there. Jane and Krenz, Susan Elizabeth Phillips, mm -hmm. um, Diana Gabaldon, and Tess will be signing Gerritsen. Uh, now, let Julia me say one of my favorites. Oops, there you Quinn. go. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it's yeah. just it's it's so amazing to to walk in, and I, I've done this. You walk into a room, and you're surrounded by. Uh, readers, fans, the writers, you, you're going to see hugging, you're going to see crying, oh, you're yeah. going to see screams of enjoyment, people laughing. It, the energy that is created in an experience like this, it, it's exactly that. It's, it's an great. experience. I love watching the people with the arms full of books after they've been up and down <laughs> the aisles. It's, it's great. It is. Because all I can think is, look at all the more money we're raising and look how happy these people look are. Too. And honestly, I'm not signing this year. I'm going and I'm shopping. I am. I'm going to <laughs> buy a bunch of some of the authors books. you're looking forward to? Some of the books oh, you Oh my goodness, um, there are people I haven't met, met yet that I'm dying to meet. Uh, Mary Kay Andrews is going to be there and I've never met her and I love her books so I'll be stopping there. I'll be standing in Susan Elizabeth Phillips' line if I can get a ticket for that one. <laughs> and I will be visiting all my friends who write for Harlequin. I, I, it's a long list. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I know you're so busy with, with all of your duties as president, especially this week. But I want to thank you so much. And I really want to thank um, everybody that's going to be coming to the signing because it's not only a great cause, but it is such a great such a great time so much fun again it's this tuesday from 5:30 to 7:30 at the marriott marquis in times square new york city